we're not at that youth of age anymore, but I thank God we can still praise God. We can get up and, and do the things that God has allowed us to do. We, we might hurt or we might fall down, but uh, thank God that we can get up and we might take a little uh, uh, Tylenol or, or something, but I think even, even we don't have to take medication, but we can call on the name of Jesus because he said, and, and, and uh, the topic is a cry for continual assistance and relief. And it, it's good to know that no matter what age we are, that we can call on the name of Jesus. Because he said he will fix it every time. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our fortune. That means God protects us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And then verse 13 is saying, let my accusers be put to shame and consumed. So the psalmist or David is crying out saying, Lord, those that's running after me to hurt me, God, let them be consumed. Let them be shut off, God. Don't let them take control of me, God, because I need your protection. And he said, let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace. Verse 14 says, look what verse 14 says. But I will hope continually and will praise you more and more, yet more and more. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. So the psalmist is saying, God, no matter how the enemy is coming after me, God, I, I know that you are my refuge and you are my strength. You're my fortress. God, I'm going to cry out to you even the more because I need you, God. And then verse 15 is saying, My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all day long. Though that number is past my knowledge, but he said, I'm just going to tell about it, God. I'm going to tell the to the generation after me about your goodness, God, and about your mercy, and about all that you have done, God. How you stood by me, God, when, when everything around me was sinking, sand, God. But Lord, you stood right by my side, God. And when I was getting a little bit low, you pulled me out, God. So God, I thank you this morning, hallelujah, for all you've done and all that you're going to do. And verse 16 said, I will come praising the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will praise your righteousness, yours alone. You know, we can, uh, just like Jonathan Nelson say, uh, we're going to move, he's going to move everything out of the way because he wants to let, no, let God know, God, you are first in my life. Uh, I don't want to sit and mope and moan about this and my bank account is that and, and my, my wardrobe is this. And, but God, I'm going to move all of that out the way, God. And Lord, I want to make room to let you know, God. God, I thank you because I remember uh, on Wednesday, Tuesday night, uh, Dickens and Hill were talking about uh, through you know, uh, know our season, and sometimes we're going to have a season that's going to be a dry season. It's going to be a pruning season. But we got to know that God said he would never leave us, nor forsake us, because we, we, we accepted him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he said, when you accept me, I'm there for you, morning, noon, and night. But he said, I never sleep nor slumber. So just make room for me and know that um, everything is going to be all right. And those are the first five verses that say a cry for continual assistance and relief. And we don't have to rely on uh, our Medicaid, Medicare, uh, AARP. Uh, it's good that they're there. Uh, but I thank God that we don't have to put all our trust in them. But we can put our trust in God. God is a, a worthy God. God is faithful. God is, even through this, uh, our trials and tribulation, this air condition, God will make a way. He'll give us a fan that we can still fan. 
verse 17, it said, Oh God, from my youth you have taught me. And that's what it's all about. We, we need to learn God while we're young. Because you know when we get older and uh, sometimes nobody can tell us not because we think we know it all. When we get old and, and there was the word can't take it us. We, uh, we have a certain way that we've grown up and can't nobody tell me not because I know it all. I saw that on, on TikTok and TikTok is always right. Facebook is always right. But what did God say? God said, as Johnson, I love that song, make room for him. We got to make sure that we always make room for God. I don't care what we're going through, how it has hurt us, how, how, how it has made us joyful, how it has made us this or that, but make sure. Because if God has blessed you with a uh, $1,000 and unexpectedly, give God the praise. Don't don't just take it and say, well, I got it made now. But see, the enemy can come and snatch that thousand dollars away from you. But if you give God the praise, God will make sure that, that, that you use wisdom in keeping your finances. And it said, oh God, for my youth, you have taught me. And I, I will still proclaim your wondrous deed. So God, I still thank you and praise you for what I learned in my youth. I, I accepted you as my Lord and Savior. I, and I didn't understand all that in you, God, but I thank you when I went out there and I thought I was grown, God. And, and I was missing something. I found out, God, that I was missing you in my life. So I went back to the church, God. And so I thank you. And so verse 18, it says, that's where we are at, man. So even to old age and gray hairs, oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to all the generation to come, your power. So it's saying, Father, even in my old age, God, when I got that gray hair, God, and, and uh, I can die every, every day, but God, that gray hair is going to always show up, God. And Lord, I thank you that you are showing up in my life, God. And those gray hairs don't mean it's you are um, ugly or anything, but it's wisdom. God is saying those gray hairs is wisdom. It's, it's knowing that you went through some things, but you didn't give up. It's okay to have gray hair. It's okay to get older. Thank God for the uh, younger generation. And we don't have to get face lips and this pool and that pool because their heart is going to stay the same. So we just got to give God the praise whenever we get a chance to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for these uh, gray hairs. My, mine's not gray anymore. Mine's white. But it's okay. I'm not going, I'm not going nowhere and get them dyed and, and say, uh, I look better with black hair at 73 years old. I, when I was young, I used to get it dyed um, often, and I thought I was cute then. But I'm cute even at, at 73 years old with, with my white hair. And I just thank God. And that's about how we got to feel about ourselves. We, we got to feel good at whatever age we are. Because God said, I want to tell you to tell the generation to come behind you about my goodness. How I stood by you. How I said I would never leave you nor forsake you. So if, no matter what age we are, God is there. He keeps on blessing us over and over again. Because that's the kind of God he is. And the last part is said, a pledge to praise and thanksgiving. We can praise God and we can say thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. But it's a it's a good song. I remember when when I became a missionary at my old church in, in uh, Maryland, uh, when we, we would go out and see the sick, uh, give them uh, communion and praise for them. This is a song that the Lord gave us to um, let the older generation know then that they have they wasn't forgotten. I was in my forties then and they was in their seventies and eighties. But I thank God I had that opportunity to to uh, because a lot of times 
hear what they're going through, how they feel that. And, and a lot of times we want to uh, say what we got to say, but a lot of times they just want you to listen and tell their story about that goodness of God and all that they've gone through and how they're hurting. But they say, Lord, thank you for just allowing someone to come to see me because my child had come and they said they would become a month ago, but they still haven't come. So they're hurting, but they just want to tell the story. So I thank God for uh, allowing me to get to that uh, senior citizen age. And I give him praise. Verse 19, it says, In your righteousness, O God, reach the high heavens. You who have done great things, O God, who is like you. Ain't nobody like God. Can't nobody do us like the Lord. Nobody. I don't care how good you look, how good you feel, how much money in your bank. Can't nobody do us like the Lord. And he said he want us to praise him for that. Even, even when, when we can't say anything, we can raise our hand and praise the Lord. God is good. And, and this is a continuation of, of giving God the praise. As it says, you who have made me see many troubles and calamities. He said, you see them, God. But then look at the last part of it. It says, you will revive me again. So no matter what, how much I fall down, God, you will revive me, God, in the name of Jesus. No matter how many things I go through, God, God, because I put my trust in you, God, you're going to revive me, God, again and again and again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. So God is an awesome God. He said, just make room for me. Just praise me, and I will, I will give you the desire. He said, if you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. Because he said, I was once, David would tell the story, I, was, I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, nor our next generation, begging God always has a room in the bush. Hallelujah. And the last verse said, You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every, is, on every side. Isn't that good news? That thou shalt increase my greatness. And it's not about us, but it's about God. God said, he will increase your greatness. Those gifts that he has put in you, he said he will increase your greatness. He will, he will because those gifts don't belong to us. If he gave it to us to edify the body of Christ. He said to edify the body of Christ, whatever gift he gave, because the gift, he only, he loaned it to us. But he said, teach the, the next generation about it. And said, you will increase my honor and comfort me once again. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And I want to read this. This is the application and review. It said, this lesson makes us aware that from the moment we discover the love and faithfulness of God until the day we take our last breath of life, we must not forget those whose hand is upon us, providing the protection and safety along the way. We must recount the many ways God guided us in times of hardships and times of celebration. So we got to celebrate God, whether we're going through or whether we're celebration, because God is the same God. He's the same God on yesterday, today, and forevermore. No, no, no believer, no matter the personal talent they possess or the level of earthly position or title they obtain, can do so and not give all the glory of the journey along the way to God. It don't belong to us. It belongs to God, and God is using us. As life forces us to remember our 
works and suffering, we also tempered them with the wonderful memory of how God brought us through those times. So we just give God a praise for the word. You know, some, it seems like whoever is writing these scriptures, it, it seems like, I know they thought, uh, they're talking to God because God gives them a word that we need right now. And I thank him for all he's doing and all he's doing in the life of our, his people that we will continue to stand in his grace. Because his grace, he said his grace is sufficient. And I thank God for that. So next Sunday, um, the lesson will be coming from Psalm 119, verses 73. And they say, God's word brings hope. God's word brings hope. And the key verse is, your hand have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. That's Psalm 119, verses 73 through 80. Thank God for the word for today. May he bless you real good. Never sleep, no sleep.